It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Reaction beanie, yo, 183. Day in the neighborhood. My brothers and sisters. My people. As always, man, I thank y'all and I appreciate y'all for coming on back to the channel once again, baby. And fucking with the bean. Now. We gonna go back to a channel that we just watched a video from yesterday, y'all. But while I was editing that video from yesterday, I seen on YouTube that he put out another video yesterday. You see, the video that we watched from him yesterday was from a week ago. So it done on me like, you know what? Every time this man put out a video, we gonna watch it because he does an amazing job and I want to react to everything that he put out from this point on. Like we do Mr. Ballin. You know every video Mr. Ballin put out, we own it. I try to do Mr. Ballin videos like the day he put it out because it's easier to do his that way because he put his shit out in the morning. So I have all day to react to it, then go edit it, then put it out to y'all. Now this guy right here, he usually put his out around like five six seven o'clock at night somewhere up in there you know what i'm saying a little later well i probably ain't gonna be able to react to it that night and put it out y'all but by the next day i'm gonna react to that bit because like i said this man here is top tier too and mr balling up here he right down here then mr Ballin, this joy and this kobe and who kobe is is mike from that chapter Going back to Mike already, y'all. Like I said, he just put the video out yesterday, and we gonna check it out. And the title of the video is Staging Home Invasion to Cover a Horrific Crime. Now, it sounds like they just set up some shit to try to hide that they did some fucked up shit. That was, that, that's basically what it sound like, right? We finna check it out, though. But before we check it out, my people, come on, man. Y'all know what y'all got to do. Get whatever you might need. Get what you need. We back the mic from that chapter already. Y'all got what y'all need. Y'all ready to go? Then let's fucking go. I'm just going to knock. I, I think this is going to be a swatting deal. I just rang the doorbell. The caller here. You should have kicked the door to make it, well, I'm just saying, or he's ransacked their house, and you're probably going, wishing you would have now. Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, the story I have for you today, it is all about family. None of it is positive. But is it ever in my old videos? This is a story of bitterness, of like throwing the ultimate tantrum, of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, which when you think about it is kind of like the most disturbing idiom of all time. Iowa? That's where we're going today. This is a story set in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and it's all about the Jackson family. The Jacksons were a family of four, and this story, it's super reminiscent of Chandler Halderson or Grant Amato. If you know those two stories, you've probably got a good idea of where this story is going, let me tell you. See, here we have a man. A, b a boy, really. A baby boy with a boo-boo on his little foot. Couldn't have been him, though, right? I don't think he has it in him. That's what he <clears throat> said, but it's not what everybody else said, including yours truly, and maybe even you, possibly, by the end of this video. And, for a second, my friends, uh, let me just take a sweet little moment to... A little bit of self-promotion because I have an announcement for y'all. So to cut to the chase, I'm sure you've all noticed how back in November I went to one That Chapter video a week, which I've been doing pretty much till now and will continue to do. But the reason why I've been doing that is because I'm finally very happy to tell you, to announce to you the That Chapter podcast. Mm. I'm so excited about this. Okay, well, first of all, what is it? I hear you're barking, big dog, let me tell you. Uh, a podcast. Uh, with me telling you, you know, the kind of stories 
true crime stories I usually do. But also not, because I'm going to be telling all sorts of murder stories I can never tell on YouTube, but I've always wanted to tell. So I'm talking like crazier plots, horror stories, ghost stories perhaps, with a few guests. Maybe, you know, dark history, historical crimes, and historical gruesomeness, and all of the story, crazy, crazy stuff. It'll be all sorts of stories, from ones I have previously made videos about. I want to go over some of my favorites, some oldies, but goldies, but they'll all be freshly retold, you know, with all sorts of updates, if there have been updates, but then a whole heap of brand new stories from all periods that I'm so excited to tell you about. For example, one of the more recent podcast episodes tells the story of the Harp Brothers and the Mason of the Woods, and these were serial killers uh, during the colonial days, uh, shortly after the American War of Independence, and they butchered their way across the frontiers of Kentucky and Tennessee, up to all sorts of horrific shit before meeting their own gruesome end. And mm. it's twice a week. So going forward, there will be three pieces of that chapter content every week. Monday, podcast. Tuesday, video. Friday, podcast. So please check out the- Alright. Oh, uh, please check out this old man podcast, y'all. He gonna do an amazing job. Like, we already know that, bro. We already know that. And I ain't never really realized that he only put out a video. He just started doing it back in November, putting out a video every week. But like I said earlier, it's so crazy that he announced and giving his schedule out as soon as I was telling y'all earlier about how we gonna always watch one of his videos. But, yeah, it's just crazy he announced that shit, how he just said it. But, yeah, every week when he put out a video, if not that day, the next day, we gonna react to it. Let's go. That Chapter Podcast on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Amazon Music, on Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. And I hope you like it because I really enjoy doing it. Now, let's get back to the story that I'm telling you in this whole video. And that is the insane lies of Alexander Jackson. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. And get whatever you make me. So this old story takes us to Eastern Iowa, to Cedar Rapids, home uh, to about 130,000 people. It's a relatively safe city, and what's the biggest employer, I hear you ask? Why? Corn, of course! Well, here's some kernels for you, and that's the Jackson family, who lived at 4414 Oak Leaf Court Northeast, in northern Cedar Rapids across the Cedar River. Lovely neighborhood. And according to Realtor.com, it looks like this. It's also off market. Good luck getting it back on the market when I tell you what happened in there. Godspeed, Realtor. Because it was there that on the 15th of June, 2021, at 8.23am, a 911 call was made from that house to the Cedar Rapids Police Department. Oh shit. Hello, welcome to our house. Our address is 4414 Oak Leaf Court, North East. I've been shot. My other family member has been shot. I need help immediately. Uh, I've been shot in the foot. There, that's how I got Okay. I've been shot. You've been shot? I've just been shot. Okay, hold on just a second. Are they still there? No, they left. They left? Did they come inside the house? Yeah. Okay, where were, where were you shot at? Downstairs. No, on your body. On your body, where have you been shot? What? On the call, a man was saying that someone had broken into his house and shot him and his family. He didn't know who they were, but he had been shot in the hoof, in the in the foot, a mere flesh wound. Now, the rest of his family weren't so lucky. But he didn't know at this point whether they were alive or dead. Bruh, his story already saw enough, sounded like bullshit. Come on, man. You got shot in the foot. You survived. Why would they shoot you in the foot and let you live but kill the rest of your family? Who is this stranger? Like, he, he, this shit, he just, he should have uh, came up with something a little better than this. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, how old are you? Uh, 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? 20? Did you get a look at them? No. Could you tell if it was a man or a woman? 
Uh, a man. Could you tell if they were white, black, Hispanic? That's okay if you don't know. Just stay on the line with me, okay? What's your first name? Uh, I'm, uh, Do you remember what color shirt or what color hair this guy had? Anything about him? Uh, what? He was just there trying to stop the bleeding in his foot. He couldn't really describe who had broken in. When asked if they were wearing black or were themselves black, he gave a yes? Question mark? <laughs> you think it was a black male or a black shirt? Uh, both? Any guns, knives, anything like that? No, but there's a no. gun on the floor. There is? That's not yours? It, it's ours, but we got shot by it. So he took your gun and shot you? Yeah. Okay. Bruh! This dude could have came up with a better story than this. Like, his story is so believable. Come on, man. Who gonna believe this shit? Then, he don't even sound convincing at all. Like, bro, your family done got shot and you, 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 you don't even sound like you care for real. I would have been hysterical on that phone if I got shot, plus my family got shot. Like... Did he even rehearse? Like, did he put in his mind that, okay, when the police asked me how he looked or what he was wearing, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say that. It seemed like he didn't even rehearse this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, just coming up with it as he go. Let's go. He said the person who had come in had used the, the Jackson's own rifle against them. Other than that, it was just a lot of grunts as his foot... In the meantime, police surrounded the house. Dogs, you name it. This is sounding bullshit. Yeah, and he would be making a shitload of noise. Hell yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna knock. He's a shot. Oh, we got ammo out here. Start another 15 Justin. Who's this down here? Hey. Oh my Who god. Who are you? Yeah. Your dad? What happened? What happened? What happened? There... He came down. There was a man. Who shot your Who dad? else is here? My sister. She's she... back? Yeah, she's in her room. Is she okay? I, I think so. Alexander was found lying. I can't. I'm. I'm sorry. I keep stopping this shit, y'all. But this is damn ridiculous. This dude did a horrible story, boy. He worse than the damn WWE. The damn WWE is more convincing than this man, bro. Wrestling is more convincing than this shit he doing. Don't none of these police believe his bullshit. They don't. How could you believe it, man? But it's so gruesome, bro, to see him sitting right there faking like somebody else shot his goddamn daddy while his daddy lay right there, right in front of him dead. And he the one who did it, but he acting like somebody else did it. And he's just doing a horrible job, bro. I just can't leave it alone. This is just a horrible act. It's horrible. Let's go. On the floor, the rest of his family murdered. And the murder weapon, a rifle, still lying on the floor. One body, Alexander's father, Jan, was lying in the basement living room near him, shot five times, twice in the head. In her own bedroom, Alex's sister, Sabrina, 19 years old, lying dead on her bed. She too had been shot in the chest and then in the face. And finally, the mother, Melissa, upstairs in the master bedroom, shot twice in the head. There was blood in Alex's bedroom, and he would later say that after he'd been shot, he crawled into his room to get his phone to dial 911. I'm assuming it's mom, dad, and sister. Okay. No names. right here okay we have confirmed all three yeah daughter in the back yeah this is so sad 
Now, Alexander Jackson, he grew up in a very loving home. Uh, by all accounts, great family, um, very healthy, just really one of those families, you know, just took care of each other. In, in the years since they'd been living in that house in Cedar Rapids, there were zero police reports. They had, the police had never been called to that house until now. As I said, the family, they were great together. You see the pictures, they would travel together. They would have dinner together, board game nights, everything kind of things I try to avoid. Alex was one year older than his little sister, Sabrina, and the family had moved to the area from Oregon about 10 years previous. As I said, all the neighbors would say, you know, in the decade they had lived there, there had never been any indications of anything, you know, no issues, they were perfectly fine neighbors. They were A-OK -okay with me, pal. Both Alex and Sabrina attended the same high school, and both were students at the University of Iowa's College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Alex, a former Eagle Scout. We're just gonna need a lift assist on the male that's injured. The other three are DOA. So who this shit would break into their house, ow, and shoot up the place? A triple homicide we got here, which is a hell of a lot more than what the police were initially called for. What they thought, they just thought it was going to be a burglary and some, boo -boo, your shots have been fired. Not executions, three of them. See, the call was made at 8.23 a.m. Alex said he called literally 30 seconds after this intruder uh, fled from the home. Now, he said that that morning, June, middle of June, so a hot, Summer's day, uh, he said he'd been sleeping out that morning he'd been in his little sleeping bag on the sun porch with their dog, Hero, but he woke to gunshots. Gunshots coming from inside the house, so he went inside. By this stage, his family was dead, and then in the basement of the house, like, as, as you can see from the body cam, I call it a basement, but it's not like a dank, dirty basement, it's like a, it's part, it's another floor of the house, it just happens to be under the ground level. It's the living room was there, uh, bedrooms. Alex and Sabrina's bedrooms were there in the basement. So he walked in there and he saw this intruder standing over his father, Jan, with a 22 caliber uh, rifle, executing him on the ground. Alex, he saw red, sprinted at him. Do, 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 do. Rugby tackled him. They fought, they, they, they wrestled, and then uh, they fought over the gun. Alex couldn't say if he fired the gun or this other guy fired the gun, but either way, Alex got shot in the foot. He fell to the ground. This guy booked it, leaving the gun there out of the home. Hey, I, I should have been saying something about this earlier. I was thinking about it, but I'm too busy talking about the other bullshit he was saying. But, bro, you mean to tell me this man took the gun from y'all? So he broke in unarmed. Some kind of way found y'all gun. Your, your dad a gun more than likely. And then killed your mama, your daddy, and your sister. But only just shot you in the foot and left. With y'all gun. This is ridiculous. This is a horrible. bro. like I said, man. Damn wrestling can tell a story better can be more convincing than this. Now, he wasn't really able to describe this person, which, I mean, you think they had wrestled. I think he'd get a pretty good look. All he could say was he was a black guy wearing black clothing and he had green shoes. Um, now, later on in the interviews, the police interviews, he can, he'll, he'll start to remember a little bit more, a few more details later on. And all over the house were spent shell casings. And no signs of whoever Alex said did this. No signs of forced entry, no signs of stuff thrown around, like a burglary, nothing was taken. Barbara, come in front of me. Can you come in front of me, Barbara? Yeah. Brown, you go help Kaczynski and then we'll take the upstairs. The dog it did a whole scent follow-up thing, trying to find the scent of this intruder, and found nothing. Hmm. No scent. The dog was like going in circles. 
The processing of the scene began, and would take place over the next few days, searching for DNA of anyone who didn't live there. They questioned neighbours, asked for nest cams, ring cams, and the CCTV of the neighbourhood. The Jacksons themselves had home security camera. And it showed... Nothing. Nobody. No stranger approaching the house, breaking in, unarmed, because the weapon they used was the Jacksons' own. Now, behind the couch in the basement- I mean, oh my god, man, this is the most stupidest shit I ever fucking heard from a damn crew. We ain't the most stupidest. I ain't gonna take it that far, but I'm just saying, this shit, bruh, we got two more evidence that he, uh, fucking lying his ass off. Number one, no forced entry into the house. If you were trying to stage this shit, bruh, when you at least kick the damn door in and make it look like somebody that bust in that bit. Number two, y'all got surveillance, bruh. Ain't nobody came in your house. Ain't no black man in no damn black clothes with some green shoes came in your house. Where is he at on the footage? If you was trying to stage this shit, wouldn't you at least get rid of the footage? Like, the, the damn cameras weren't working or something? Like, what was the thought process with this? That's what got me wondering. Um, was this, did this happen in a fit of rage? Or did he, like, plan this out? That's what I'm wondering, like, did he know he was going to kill them or he got mad about some shit and just decided to kill them? Because I don't know. I don't know. Spent living room. Um, behind that couch was a little pile of spent shell casings indicating that that's where the person was firing from. See, this particular murder weapon, the Jackson's own uh, rifle, when it fired, the spent shell casings were ejected from the bottom of the gun. So they just fall directly down. Like in a lot of other uh, weapons and rifles, these spent shell casings will be ejected from the top and go spinning out everywhere. But not this gun. Yeah. So where the spent shell casings were found, you could assume that the shooter was directly above it. And from the evidence, it appeared that Jan Jackson, he'd been in his office upstairs having his little, his little morning cup of joe and his breakfast muffin. Maybe he heard something, he heard gunshots. He started walking down the stairs when the killer, the shooter who was standing behind that couch, where a pile of spent shell casings were found, opened up on Jan as he was walking down the stairs into the basement. There was bullet holes found uh, in the wall where the stairs was. Uh, Jan was shot a couple of times. He tumbled to the bottom of the stairs. There was a blood pile found there. Then this killer walked over, over Jan, executed him. Then maybe they shot Sabrina before, and that's why Jan went down the stairs because Sabrina's bedroom was in the basement. But regardless, she uh, was shot from the hallway, and then they walked over again, shot her again, point blank. Then the killer went upstairs to the master bedroom, where the mother, Melissa, was sleeping. Again, shot from just inside the door, walked over, shot her again, in the face. Whoever did this wanted to be real sure. Alex, 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 stay up there. 20, Alex, 20, 20, 20. okay. Can we get you? We're gonna try Let and get you. Let me sneak by her over sneak here. Sneak by over know. here. Okay. Alright. I'm talking about, bro, he right by his fucking daddy, bro. He right by me. You know you killed that man, man. This motherfucker is sick, though. This is some sick, some of the most sick shit I have seen at the same time, y'all. Like, oh my goodness, bro. What it take a special type of person to do some shit like this? It take a cold hearted, just maniac type person. To... Let's go. Ready? One, two, three. Put your weight on your other foot. Your other foot. We're at the limp out. 20, right? 20, 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Alright. What hospital are you going to? I, 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 I don't know. You prefer? I don't, I don't In the meantime, Alex was taken to the hospital to secure his foot. Gotta make sure you don't bleed out. You know what I'm saying? He was interviewed there, but he was also on uh, a lot of drugs for his foot. Is that all you want to say? Do you have any other injuries, Alex? I hope not. Okay. Are you able to... Is this like hurt at all? No. 
Are you gonna like rotate it in the other? Yeah, so you can kind of see the full extent of your. I'm on the side one. White man, black man, Hispanic, Asian. Oh, well, that's not. I mean, I know he's wearing black clothes. So he ran at this guy. Yeah. Then what happened? I pushed him. Quite deep. Uh, what I pushed. Quite yeah, deep. Yeah. Deep voice. Oh, deep voice. Gotcha. What did they say? Fuck you. He told the police everything that had happened up until that point. He said that the night before, um, on the 14th of June, him and his dad had had, had that 22 rounding rifle out, and they were cleaning it together. Um, but then Alex said he think the gun was just left out there. Um, he went, his dad still had it when Alex went off to do something else uh, that night. But then clearly the killer entered the house that morning, picked up the gun, and coldly, calculatingly loaded it fired off. That gun could hold 11 rounds, but more than 11 rounds were fired, so they loaded it that morning, started shooting, loaded it again. That killer left no DNA, and uh, no fingerprints were found on the rifle, other than Alex's. Hmm. Must have happened after he went inside and wrestled, right? Though he was all very fake, you know, he heard gunshots, went inside, saw a, a tall black guy wearing all black standing over his father, sprints at him, Book goes boom. Ah, me thought. Now, there were a number of inconsistencies in Alex's story, though. So, he said he was sleeping outside that night with the dog in a sleeping bag, and it was a very hot summer's day, and then he went inside, wrestled, he got shot in the foot, and then he had to crawl into his own bedroom to grab his phone, because he didn't have his phone outside, outside with him. But, the phone activity said he probably did have his phone with him, because there was activity on the phone. He'd been Googling things, and he'd been on iFunny.com. <laughs> He couldn't describe the killer until he needed to to fit his story. Like, he never said the killer wore gloves until he was confronted with the fact that only his fingerprints were found on the gun. Um, he said he didn't get a look at him, but then he later said, oh, I, he was wearing a balaclava. After he shot you, he left. I think so. No DNA or scent of this mystery man either, nor CCTV or security footage. And the rifle, the weapon that was used, the murder weapon, the Jackson's weapon, it was so unusual that the investigators, when they were looking into it, and the investigators were all, you know, very familiar with firearms, right? Knew all about guns. But when they were looking at this gun, they were like, I have no idea how to load this. They, the investigators said they had to watch YouTube videos. Uh, you load Damn. it simply by the magazine tube comes out the rear here and you simply put in, I think, 11 or 12 rounds of 22 into the stock. It is a bottom ejector, okay, uh, which is fine, I guess. To figure out how to load. There go another clue, y'all. Another way that we can debunk this bullshit. Bro, this ain't even no regular gun where you just got down putting a clip in and just, uh, uh, cocking it back to get one in the chamber. There's some extra shit you got to do with this gun. Even the investigators ain't know how to do it. So you telling me a damn stranger just came in your house and just knew how to use this gun so perfectly? How to load this weapon when this mystery man broke in, knew immediately how to do it, and did it twice. Palm prints were found on the gun, consistent with Alex Jackson's. Also found was prints on the gun, on the barrel of the gun. They were found on a part of the barrel that would be very consistent with you grabbing the gun, pointing it down, and shooting yourself in the foot. Mm. Alex Jackson's. We, uh, when we stepped out, we talked to our co-workers. They were up at, the, at your house. Shot. I think he left. Alex 
On the Bloody Prince, where Alex said he dragged himself into his room to grab his phone after he had been shot, well, the blood doesn't enter Alex's room as if he had crawled in, but it does exit his room. Mm. Alex must have shot himself in the foot in his own bedroom. I'm okay with the fact that you have been completely honest about this and the fact that you, want, you have it. Do you want our report to reflect that there was a guy in your house that there's no evidence of? And this was a guy in my house. Also. Listen to me. Do you want us to write down a report that there was a guy in your house that there's no video of ever showing up or leaving? Do you want us to put that down? Or do you want to give us some sort of an explanation that makes sense? I want the guy for why this happened. When's the first time you, you, you thought about this scenario? I didn't do it, okay? I would never hurt my family. They are important to me. I have loved them. We were going to continue to, to confront you with the inconsistencies, okay? okay? And that's why it just gets to the point where it's like, when is, when is it time to just come clean? You know what I mean? You shot yourself in the foot. Because you have to shoot yourself in the foot. I would do that. Okay, but, yeah, you, you wouldn't want to, I wouldn't like to that either, but you have to, because, how can everybody else, why would I do something like this, to make it look like sleep? You should have kicked the door, to make it, well, you saying right? Are you just ransacked the house. Yeah, you to make it look like you were there, and you're going to have to make it and you are probably going wishing you would have now. Do you still think someone was there? Yeah. Do you know someone was there? Okay, how did they get out? Um, I can't really remember. Probably the door they came in. But, uh, what they did? There should be three counts for degree murder. Boy, he's sticking to his bullshit ass story, ain't he, y'all? He's stuck in his ways. This motherfucker is probably one of the motherfuckers who, oh, excuse me, he probably one of the motherfuckers who uh, lie so much, or not even lie so much, but you know how some people can lie to the point where they actually believe it themselves? He probably believed his whole story himself, in his little head of his, in his bullshit head of his. Oh, he probably don't believe in himself, but just gonna stick to that dumb ass story. Anyway, go, this is a fucked up motherfucker. Fuck him, and he a dumb ass, and fuck it. Long story short, short story long. Let's continue. The day of the shooting, Alexander Jackson was arrested and charged with three counts of first degree murder. A Lynn County prosecutor called Alexander Jackson a danger to the community. Police say Alexander called 911 at 8.23 Tuesday morning, saying a masked intruder had shot him and his father. When Cedar Rapids police arrived at 4414 Oakleaf Court Northeast, they found three bodies in three separate rooms. Alexander went to the hospital with a gunshot wound to his foot. What is, uh, what is your name, sir? You may proceed, Mr. Baker. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Criminal complaints have filed against you, accusing you of the crimes of count one, murder on the first degree, count two, murder on the first degree, count three, murder on the first degree. Uh, Your Honor, based on the facts of this case, it is clear that this was a horrendous murder. It was more than just a murder, it was an execution of the defendant's mother, father, and sister. Furthermore, the defendant's concocted story of a phantom burglar shows that the defendant acted out of malice and calculated an attempt to get away with these murders, and he's clearly a danger to the community for those reasons you're on the state request the bond that's mentioned. 
His bail was set at $3 million. He went on trial in early 2023. He pleaded not guilty. Wow. The defense argued that this case was, was much it was pretty much all circumstantial and all the evidence was left open to, to interpretation. And an intruder couldn't, you know, definitively be ruled out. Um, so, and nobody, so nobody really knows what could have happened that very day. Just, just because there is no evidence uh, for some of something happening doesn't mean it didn't happen. This was a family who loved each other and celebrated each other's accomplishments. The home was littered with family photos. Why would he have done this if he had e indeed done it? Right? Why would he? No motive has ever been proven in this case. If indeed, like, ever, all the evidence was pointing back at Alexander Jackson, his story was inconsistent and made no sense, and all the evidence was pointed directly back at him. But why? The defense said it was why? more likely that this was an actual intruder. This was an affluent part of town. The houses were all, you know, pretty, pretty nice, right? And there were, there's lots of, their houses weren't too close to each other, so a killer could easily kind of come and go. And, and another thing was that the camera at the back of the Jackson house, they did have a security camera there, but it wasn't working. Usually right. you break into either steal the stuff, or in this case, kill people. Yeah. Well, but that occurs, that people come into a home and kill people, right? Right, but my big problem with that is when you do that, you bring a weapon. Well, who's to say that this intruder didn't have a weapon? Why would you use their weapon if you brought one? Because that's a better weapon. You told Alex that people don't just come in and kill people, but that's exactly what happened in Idaho, right? Yeah, but what I really meant was that people don't just come in and kill random people. They don't what? Random people. Like Those people in Idaho aren't random. He was stalking one of them. Well, that's, again, the news. your theory. Well, I got that source from the news. Okay, all right, we'll go with that. But there have been cases that people just came in and killed people randomly. If I got if I get your testimony straight, Mr. Jackson shoots himself in the foot in his bedroom. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It looks that way. There's no bullet found in that bedroom, was there? No. No shell casing found in that bedroom? No, but he also had a shell casing in his hand at one point. When he and crawled, there's no bullet found where he claimed he was shot himself, or I'm sorry, where he claimed this shot occurred. So you think that he, after he shot himself, he took the firearm back up the hallway and dropped it off on the other side of his father. Is that your theory? That's exactly what I think happened. Yep. Thank you. No further questions. Bro, these fucking de defense attorneys, bro. No, I, I ain't even, y'all know how I feel about them. They disgusting, man, to try to try to flip this into a way that he ain't did it and the stuff that they would say. And he no. Let's go. Maybe somebody could have come in that way. And the police dog that we can see in the body cam going around, it didn't pick up any scent of any supposed killer. Uh, right, well, as you can see in the body cam, what? The dog is panting a lot, which the defense said could have I interfered with its its scent tracking capabilities. Um, and also, this this dog wasn't used to tracking on on concrete and gravel. It was like a, a a forest dog. The defense called witnesses who said they never saw him lose his temper, act out of anger, misbehave, nothing. A friend said he was laughing and joking the night before when they were playing Halo together online. The motive that has been offered. In this case, uh, quite simply, it comes down to this. When Alexander Jackson said this, when he shot himself in the foot, again. I support this team right now. I don't support this team. I need you. Who pays for your chicken blood? Well, my parents That's why you're told. You have a conversation with your dad about you. Find a job. Yes. His father, John Jackson, told Alex he needed to get a job or he needed to move out of the house. Mm. That's it. 
And so with that, they argued that the motive was uh, Alexander Jackson's parents were forcing him to get a job, one of those dang dirty jobs. Uh, uh -uh. Or they were going to kick him out of the house, which is like a, you know, common threat. I don't, I don't think they would have followed, followed up with actually kicking him out of the house. So they say, well, it's been offered that, well, Alexander Jackson, he saw only one way out, and that was via the 22 caliber rifle. Concocting this whole story of an intruder breaking in and killing his family, and then he shot himself in his own foot to make it seem like he was a victim too. At the time of the murders, Alexander Jackson had $30 in his account. Wow. But other motives? Perhaps even... Exactly. It's all making sense now, y'all. Or some sort of a motive. Was it an er inheritance? They have no proof that Alex would inherit. They have, they have not testified about a will, whether there is a will, whether there isn't a will, what it says, or whether Alex even knows. There was a, well, some question about the sister being bisexual, that somehow that would be some something motive for Alex to kill his sister. Well, you hear Alex later in the interview when they start questioning Alex's sexuality. Alex said, I'm not, I'm straight, but if I wasn't, my parents would be open to that. He says that right in there. It's not a motive. His grades dropping during COVID, that's a reason to kill your whole family? Or he didn't have a job? How many kids didn't? How many kids had their, had their grades drop during COVID? And Alex said that his father was treating him fairly, that his father was letting him make his own mistakes. A common and reoccurring theme that you're going to find as you go back over your jury instructions is that in multiple places in those instructions, multiple different instructions, it says that you as jurors are to use your reason and your common sense. It does more than say it. It demands that you as jurors, when you go through this evidence and evaluate it and give weight to it, that you use your reason and common sense. And I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that as you process that evidence and as I sit down and Mr. Johnston stands up and then I get to talk to you one more time, that as you're evaluating everything that you've seen over the last couple of weeks that's been presented in this case using your reason and common sense, you're going to find that the defendant's story does not make sense. It really don't. That it is unreasonable to believe the story told by the defendant. And I'm asking you now, and I'm going to ask you again when I stand back up, that when you go back and you deliberate over this case and you process the evidence in this case, that you as jurors return verdicts, murder in the first degree, for the murder of Jan Jackson, the murder of Melissa Jackson and the murder of Sabrina Jackson. One thing just hit me, y'all. This shit just hit me right now. They bet him. He bet her be found guilty of this shit. This just hit me. If this man is found not guilty of this shit, I'm go go fuck ballistic I'll go crazy he better be found guilty of this shit if I hear anything about there was not enough evidence to prove that it was him oh my god let's find out At the end of the trial, Alexander Jackson was found guilty oh. on three counts of first degree murder. All right. On each of, as to each of the three counts, um, form of verdict two has been executed. We, the jury, find the defendant, Alexander Jackson, guilty of the offense of murder in the first degree. He will be sentenced in early March. Uh, but, I mean, his convictions, they... They guarantee a mandatory life sentence without parole. So, you know, farewell, Alex. We hardly knew you. And Shane, that ends this old story. That's the end of the end of Alex 
Alex Jackson, a story with a lot of holes in it, um, that's for sure. A story with a lot of inconsistencies, kind of on both sides, depending on which side of the argument you, you, you come down on. It's an odd one, made even odder by everything the suspect did, but it's also so odd, it's, it doesn't make any sense. It seems just ridiculous that he did actually go through with it. It's bizarre, it's insane, and that's the end of the Jacksons of Cedar Rapids. Before I go, folks, I just want to say again, uh, if you enjoyed this whole video, please check out the That Chapter podcast. If you enjoy my videos, you will certainly enjoy the podcast where I'll be telling all sorts of crazy stories and bizarre plots. All the sort of stories I love to tell you and hopefully you love to hear. Twice a week, Mondays and Fridays, so give it a goo. But until the next one, which will be probably the podcast becoming important next video. But anyway, uh, whatever it is. As always, please take care of each other. Please take care of yourselves because I love you. Mike out. Y'all see why I said I gotta start watching every video this man put out, bro. Mike then came a long way too, man. Like, like I said it about Mr. Ball, like it seemed like he just keep getting better and better. This man getting better and better, y'all. But as far as this story go, my people. At the end, I, I for a little second, man, I was starting to wonder, okay, is he really gonna be found guilty of this shit? I am so happy and so glad he was. Cause that would have been the most ridiculous shit I ever heard in my life if the uh the jury wouldn't have found him guilty of this shit, man. And in the end, it made sense why he did this shit. This is, I would, I mean, I'm gonna call it a theory. I guess it is a theory of my opinion, but I feel like this is like, this is really what it is. This man had got older, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't a little child no more. And his parents were telling him, your ass need to goddamn get you a job. You know how when you get older, man, when you, after you graduate high school, your parents gonna start telling you, hey, you need to get a job. You need to do this. You need to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's time to become an adult. He didn't want to become an adult. Because just looking at their house, and then especially on the inside of the house, how nice it was, you can tell that this family had money. Well, his mama and daddy had money. And he wanted to stay there forever and goddamn let them take care of him forever. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want to actually grow up and be an adult and have his own responsibility and having to pay for him. And when his daddy started talking that shit to him, he decided, I just gotta kill him. Because if I kill him, it, I don't even think it was the life insurance part, or even that might have, maybe he would have, maybe he was thinking he would get life insurance. But even, they ain't got nothing to do with life insurance. I'm pretty sure if he wouldn't have been found guilty for this shit, or he wasn't he he the one to do it, or whatever. He would have at least got all the money that was in his mom and daddy's bank account. You know what I'm saying? Like, he would have got some money. Like, he felt like I needed to kill my parents to get all the money that they got. So I ain't got no work. I ain't got to do shit. He probably thought he was going to still stay up in that house and everything. I feel like that's why he did this shit, y'all. Because he didn't want to get out on his own and become a damn adult. So he wanted to kill his parents to uh, take over their bank accounts and, and live off what they done did all their goddamn life in their adult life. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to live off debt by taking their life. And did his sister too, bro. This one here, man. It was, oh my God, bro. This was sad as fuck, bro. It was sad as fuck, y'all. <laughs> Good, great video, like I said, man. 10 out of 10 as far as Mike telling the story and all that, now. Nah. But the story is just, oh my God, bro. It's some crazy shit they be having in this world, man. I digress. I'm finna go and let y'all go, bro. This one was exhausting, especially with all the fucking lying he was doing this whole damn video. This one was just, ah. But y'all hit that like button, y'all come and subscribe, and come on back tomorrow. Because ain't no telling what channel we going to next time. But until next time, my friends, I got a couple more things I got to say. Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.